Hey everyone, it's Miriam with a Y. This video is going to be a little different than usual. Instead of pouring, we'll be talking about the possibility of a new tool. Some of you have been amazing and have contributed funds to this channel, and your support and encouraging me to keep trying new things is definitely going to make sharing more of whatever I learn possible and hopefully make your art journey more informed, more efficient, and ideally less costly. Since showing how to do more to our pores with forks and combs, skewers, straws, and tubes, amongst my favorite things, is what this channel hopefully does for you, I ordered an airbrush to see what that might do and hopefully show you new things we can do with our pores. For now, I'm envisioning this as something just to blow our paints and resin around. So getting one with a high-end compressor and fancy triggers, etc., seemed overkill. So I did a bit of research and went with one for just under $40 that will hopefully suit our needs. And since it just arrived, I thought I would unbox it with you in case you've wondered about getting one yourself. Straight out of the box, you get two boxes. Um, this little one that's got the actual gun in it. And it seems to come in a case. Yeah. So... This is the actual brush, and it's got some sort of pipette looking thing, not sure what that's for yet, and some sort of little wrench, I'm sure it's to adjust something or another, and this is the actual airbrush gun thing, and it's got a trigger here and a cup here. Like I said, I don't know that I'm going to be using this at all with actual airbrush paint, but who knows, maybe we'll get that far, but I don't know. Right now, I really want it just to blow air. Then in this box is the compressor, I'm sure. Okay, there is something that's got some web pages that you can go to to check out airbrushing tips, etc. Then some an operations page, which is good. <laughs> it's just one page, so it can't be that difficult. And aha, the compressor. And a power cord. And I think that's all that's in here. There's this little, I'm thinking a stand. And the hose. Okay, I believe this must go here because I don't see where else this would go. So I'm pretty sure this is, oh, it's a little tricky to get it in there. I think it's a stand for the gun. I'm pretty sure, I think. Yeah, okay, so that you, when you're not working, you can set the gun in here to hold it up for you. Because ordinarily this would be filled with paint, and I'm sure you don't want to just lie down on its side because your paint would spill all over the place because this thing is not airtight, I mean, or watertight, I'm sure. Okay, apparently there's more instructions under here. And pretty basic stuff. And diagram and parts list. Okay, I've unwrapped the hose. And it seems to be, I don't know, somewhere five to six feet long. Somewhere thereabouts. Definitely longer than four feet. And it's got these two ends. One of them must com connect to the compressor and one must connect to the brush. Let's see. Now, in these 
pictures, I gotta say, there is no diagram for putting this sucker together. So that is disappointing. So... Well, given this type of jack, this must go here because it wouldn't connect to that. Yes, all right, that's connected there. I don't see. This would go into a hose because I've seen things like this and other things. This would have to go into a hose. I suspect that this is if you have some other kind of hose attachment. Let me see. I don't see why you need this. So, <laughs> I don't know. I think. Okay, that fits. All right, it's plugged in. Let's see what happens now. All right, so that's the volume of this thing. The... Yeah, that works. Okay. The difference between this sort of inexpensive type of compressor and the sort of fancy bigger ones, the the kind that people use for nail guns and a uh, serious compressor doesn't need to be on all the time. It just needs to build up enough air pressure in the tank and then you can run your gun. So it doesn't need to be on continuously. These little guys do need to be on all the time because there is no tank for it to store pr compressed air in. So it's just going to be pushing air out all the time. And the instructions say that you shouldn't run this for longer than half an hour. I can't imagine that I would be running this for more than half an hour at a time. And it says that if you're going to need to run it for longer than that, you let it cool down for a while. That's not going to be a problem. So now that I've hooked it up and so once I turn it on... This little button here shoots air out. So, okay. And if there was paint in the cup, pulling back on the trigger would release paint from the nozzle, but I'm not doing that. Okay, I set up a little tile here for a test and I'm gonna spread my trusty white paint. Let's see what movement this gun can give us. And maybe a line of black paint. Let's see if we can blow that around. Oh. Ah. Oh. Okay. This has some serious potential. Okay, so I will be messing around with this and seeing what sorts of things I can come up with to show you. thing that I don't see yet, and I don't know if it's possible with the less expensive ones, I don't see a way of varying the amount of air that comes out. So it may be a matter of the distance in terms of how much blowing we do. But I think that there's a lot of potential for this. Um, the amount of air that shoots out is more than I think any of us can blow um, consistently, and uh, and if any of you have blown a lot of air through a straw, you know that 
I don't care who you are, that eventually there's going to be a little bit of saliva coming out at the end of the straw. And I think that this <laughs> is going to be very neat in eliminating that. Ooh, you have to be a little careful. Ooh, I can, you can shoot off some serious amount of paint there. <laughs> oh, it's kind of like the splatter effect without using the hammer. But I got to tell you, it's a little messy because I shot some paint off to the corner there. But I think that if I set up some sort of splash guard, ooh, that could be fun too. Oh, because... The hammer thing always freaked me out. I was always afraid of doing that onto a canvas. I, I see a lot of people do it and they seem to work just fine, but I've been a chicken. This seems less scary to me because I don't see it that I would hurt anything, but <laughs> it did make a little bit of a mess. You can't see it, but this, yeah, I shot paint around. So this is the kind of thing I think I would do inside a box or a bin. For those of you that chipped in for this, thank you so much. I think we're going to learn a lot and I can't wait to see what this can do for us. If you're excited too, let me know in the comments below. Leave a thumbs up if this is a direction you think might be fun to explore without and with dimethicone or silicone. Let me know ideas you might have and let's have some fun and learn together. I will put the link in the description box below the video for this particular airbrush for those of you already curious about it. And as always, thanks for watching. Share with your friends, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Bye now.